tell us about this life-changing near-death experience. What happened? How, how did it happen? Well, uh, in 1977, I was, uh, I've been a musician since the uh, early 60s and uh, got a degree in electrical engineering. 1970, it was all defense work, Vietnam. So I decided, screw it, I'm going to play music. Good for you. Um, so in 1977, I had to uh, quit a band. I was just tired of traveling. And I um, moved back in with my two roommates, who I hadn't hardly even seen since I moved in just a month earlier. And all of a sudden, I started feeling these out of the clear blue premonitions about what people were going to say, the next person in the room. And so uh, all uh, I started feeling like what they were going to say and what they're going to see and think. And this sort of stunned me. That night, I didn't go to sleep at all, couldn't sleep. My mind kept racing. Next day, my roommate walks in reading the paper, the newspaper, and I saw the headlines through his eyes. And he threw the paper down on the, the table, and it had an article about Jimmy Carter. And I was stunned. And he, you okay? I said, uh, yeah. Well, anyway, that was the start. Uh, that It was on about uh, January 31st, 1977. By February 1st and 2nd, life had completely changed. I was picking up thoughts about people. I was picking up what they were going to do next, say next, who was going to call on the phone. And within 24 hours, I couldn't imagine what normal life was like anymore. I had no idea why this was happening. I didn't know if I had a button to push it on my head to stop it. Uh, it was kind of terrifying, but very intriguing, too. Yeah. Uh, for example, we went to a bar that night. And as we walked into the club, I got a strange premonition at a certain spot right outside the door. I didn't think about it. We went in listened to the band for a minute it was too loud for me i walked back into the bar area sat on a stool thought about taking a walk outside and all of a sudden i'm outside in that same spot that i'd felt just a moment ago and i see these people walk right through me i open my eyes i'm right back in the bar stool the door opened and the people walked through dressed as exactly as i'd seen them hmm. and i started trying this for a that, time that'll before. trip you out oh boy did it blow my mind I mean, every customer that would walk by could feel what they were thinking. My roommate friend came in from the other room, asked me what's going on. And I tried to, uh, I just demonstrated. I said, if a bitch five bucks, I can tell what these people are dressed like. The next people come, you're on. <laughs> well, after 10 bucks, losing 10 bucks, he gave up. That sort of phenomena started happening. I kept seeing clocks. And uh, like, for example, I, I was going to go over to someone's place. And uh, I'd see a clock, and as soon as I'd arrive at their place, I'd see that clock at that time, verify. And I'd never seen that clock before. I started, I could look at a stranger's three blocks away, complete stranger. First of all, there was no neutral. I couldn't turn it off. There was no mm -hmm. way to just relax. That was not like normal life. Mm -hmm. I either was feeling things or, in my mind, externalizing things i'd look at a complete stranger three blocks away and think scratch your head and point up to that building and they would do it and i'd think did i know that was going to happen and pick that up or did i make that happen and the thin line between witness and creator got thinner i could not tell the difference and with that i got terrified what if i thought nuclear bomb or car wreck or whatever yeah this went on and on and on. And for example, we were in a bar one one afternoon, and um, my friend said he was where I was going through something indescribable. Didn't know what to do. Wanted to turn me onto a friend psychologist or so forth, but he was uh, asking me, "Okay, well, how? What are you doing now? Well, how's it feel now?" I said, "I'll just uh, show you. It's easier." And I looked at two ladies over in the far end of the restaurant. Neither of us knew them. I asked him to glance at them. I said, I'm going to have the brunette write me a letter. What? I said, I'm going to have her write me a letter. Completely harmless. As we ate, he completely forgot about that. He's talking, jabbing, and looking at all the girls. And I kept thinking, write me a letter, honey. Write me a letter. I'm the guy in the blue shirt over here. And as they left, they walked by our table. First lady walked by. The brunette walked by and threw a napkin down on our table. And it had big, bold letters. She had written, why are you doing this to me? That blew me away. Absolutely blew me away. So wow. 
So not only was I feeling these things, but they other people were picking, were picking it up. You were, yeah, you were. and I couldn't tell. I, I was have never felt so terrified and so enlightened at the same time. Right. <laughs> the, uh, it wasn't normal life. Was there a trigger? There was no trigger that did this. It just started arbitrarily came on. It seemed like it arbitrarily came on one night. Yeah, actually, the the uh, afternoon of January thirty first, nineteen seventy seven, we were leaving Lubbock. Uh, driving back to Austin, I arrived that night. Even then, I started feeling some sort of strange thing was happening, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, after two or three, go ahead. I was going to say, would you consider yourself like like a fast forwarding now? You know, forty years later, with all the gift you've you, you you've gotten here, like walking, like like how do you how do you look at yourself now? Would you consider yourself more like a mentalist? Are you still able to project those thoughts and have people do that? Uh, Not to that level. I don't try that level. I don't need the confirmation anymore of the interconnectedness of all of us. Uh, did after you... about a week of this, I kept feeling feeling these guardian angels. They called themselves the monitors, or I named them that, and they agreed or something. I never saw them, but I could feel them. Uh huh. And many times I could feel them, and I felt kind of protected and observed, you know, because I didn't know what the hell was going on. Anyway, after a lot of bizarre incidences for that entire week, I was terrified. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't turn it off. I didn't know what the hell was happening. Everybody would walk by. I could read their whole mind, their whole history. It's too much. You know, what, why is this happening? I started crying and praying. I'm pacing down Guadalupe Street in Austin, just beyond terrified. And a lot of people are looking at me like, what's the matter with this guy? I did not care. You know, and so in the middle of that crying and praying and screaming, all of a sudden I felt incredible warmth and fear just dissipated instantly. I mean, instantly. And I looked up and there was this huge light above my head, about six feet. I remember thinking, well, if I had a ladder, I could touch it. It was physical. Mm -hmm. I looked around. None of these people watching me. There's a big circle around me by this time. Uh, none of these people noticed it or glanced or they're just staring at me and i kept looking up at it and finally it went from a light to a crystal crystal table about that thick not that thick not that thick but a crystal table clear see through it and uh, there was these seven monitors around them and this light they had their hands on the table and the light was coming down from their hands and i realized they were these guardian angels these monitors and they said, yes, we are. And I said, man, I can't understand what's going on. I'm scared. I'm terrified. Blah, 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 blah. Shh. Do you trust us? I said, yes, but I don't understand. Blah, blah, blah. Shh. Do you trust us? One voice, real warm, like James Earl Jones, this deep, warm, affirming, powerful, protective voice. I said, yes, absolutely. Long story short, and I write this about the book. It's kind of hard to explain. I was hit head on by a speeding car. The same All of a sudden, night? I'm outside my body. And well, was, this, my... was this the, the same week? No, this is the same day. This is seconds, only seconds after I was saying, after I the said, do you trust us? Yeah. Uh, so I, I uh, incident with a car, I'm outside my body. I'm seeing my car, my body getting tumbled by the car. The whole city of Austin shrunk. The whole earth shrunk. I was expanding outward in all directions like a expanding balloon, not like an arrow. Mm -hmm. And it was the be most beautiful sensation. My fear had completely vaporized. I didn't know what was happening, but boy, it was beautiful and it was fun. And it was a joy. You know, when we, uh, before we started the show, um, you know, we'd ask you off air, said, how you're doing? And you made reference to something along the lines of, well, better than the rest of the world, something along those lines, right? W what do you, what do you think is wrong with the rest of the world? And, what what is it that's i mean i know it's a broad brush question but just inherently speaking what is so messed up right now why the world is in so much thing and is it is it all of the world in general or is it just pockets different areas like how are you how do you see it and, and Go ahead. real quick before you get to jay did you figure out why or what triggered that those events I had given up my horses 20 years before that 
was taking Tylenol, Aleve, and Tramadol, got off them in three days, and I'm getting goosebumps. Um, and if I cry, I'm sorry, but it's really, it's really moving. Um, what it's changed, how it's changed my life. 